Kat here with a few moments of journaling companionship. I am offering today 10 minutes of writing together. I have my notebook, I have my timer, and I am inviting you to just put everything else aside for this short time, 10 minutes. You can probably fit it in on lunch schedule, early Saturday morning, uh, just a little time for yourself where you can connect with your thoughts. The prompt I have in mind is from this book, Solitude, which is a 1988 book, very a lot more academic than I was expecting. I think I was expecting something more poetic. But Anthony Storr mentions that this phrase, we are of divine discontent. And one of the reasons I write so much, engage in writing practice and journaling is because I feel like I'm constantly dissatisfied and I need to find that balance point. Writing, journaling is great for this. However, not however, and in this short time together, I encourage you to write whatever you want. But if you have a general sense of discontent, and frankly, it's the human condition, who doesn't? Fine, if you want to take a little time, how? Can you more practically use that discontent? He actually goes on to say that it is um, considered adaptive because it encourages the use of the imagination. And thus, <clears throat> quoting exactly, or spurs men onto further conquests and to ever increasing mastery of their environment. Frankly, it sounds a lot like the manifest destiny idea and um, how we should take over everything around us and be in control of everything. Perhaps we've evolved to a new way of being. Maybe we can write about that today. How can we use divine discontent to spur us on to use our imagination to maybe make life better for ourselves and others? I don't know. What do you think? Want to try it? Okay. I have the timer set for 10 minutes. I'm hitting it now. Enjoy. See you soon.
So the timer just went off. I'm going to finish the sentence. That's our only defense, maybe. All right. Well, I hope you have a good time writing. Um, one thing about these timed rights is that you don't want to stop unless, it, it, even if you can't think of what to say, just keep writing because it generates um, a forward momentum and you might blurt out something that you weren't expecting. When we stop, we often will uh, begin to edit in our mind and look, wait until we have something really important to say. But if you do that, you will almost surely, almost always miss things that you would not otherwise say because things get trapped somewhere between our brain and our pen. So that's our writing session. I'm gonna read a little bit of what I wrote if you wanna hear it. Otherwise, I hope you go on to a lovely day that's full of presence, really. Just be present to what is. And uh, I hope that your writing helps you become pres more present to what is. Okay, I wrote, how can I use discounted, I mean, sorry, discontent to become more imaginative in a way that makes life better for me and others? Divine discontent. I am divinely discontented. There's a Joseph Campbell quote that says, if you are falling, then dive. So if I am forever fated to be discontent, how can I make it a good thing? How can I lean into it and use it? Well, I can heed this desire and penchant for writing. I do often journal, but sometimes I resist it, especially when I feel grumpy or especially snarled. And it's then that I tend to fall inward instead of do, going outward or diving outward, like the quote. Partly, I think it's that because I am worried, convinced, conditioned to think that my discontentment is something bad. I feel guilty about it. I grew up Catholic, so I feel guilty about something always. But, well, um, <laughs> then I didn't know what to write, so I just wrote, oh, gosh, it's only five minutes into it. Oh, yes. So I grew up Catholic, and it does influence me. Still, of course, I can learn and grow. I would love not to feel so discontented or at least not so guilty about it. How can I dive into the feeling, generate an imaginative image that energizes rather than depresses? What comes to mind is that little excerpt I have actually typed up and have it somewhere. I'll take a peek and see if I can find it. I think it was from an Edgar Eager book, maybe Half Magic. So it's a children's book. The quote goes something like this. The girl sat on the back of her uh, make pretend pony, whacking about gaily with her sword. Oh gosh, I know I've gotten the wording so wrong, but the image is accurate. A little human on a make-believe steed wrangling her mode of protection with ineffective but wild abandon. It's really our only defense against all this dis distinct <laughs> disturbance, not distinct disturbance, divine discontentment. Thanks for joining me. I hope you'll consider being a subscriber on my Substack. Let's practice together. I do we monthly online meetings and writing together, quiet writing like we did here, except for 20 minutes. And some people like to share and some people don't, but it's a wonderful place just to enjoy the energy of others as we write about a prompt that I might bring or just whatever calls to you in the moment. I also offer weekly encouragements and companion videos like this one, as well as a growing repertoire of different things to help make writing more accessible to all of us. I hope you will join us and practice together. And until then, do take care.